chapter one, part two, about homeostasis. So that's the internal steady state that the body has to maintain the internal environment so that we're able to survive. Um, so for example, your body maintains proper blood glucose levels that range between 70 and 110 milligrams of glucose or sugar in the blood. If it gets too high or low, that can be very dangerous. Um, we'll watch this video in class. You can also find these notes on Google Classroom. And you can watch any of these videos that are linked here on your own time as well for to um, put that in your brain for um, long-term learning. Body fluids. So your body has to maintain the fluids and, and balance, um, you know, too much, too little, not enough left or lates, or too much, etc. So the fluid inside the cells is called intracellular fluid. Um, outside of cells is extracellular fluid. And then a special fancy, even more complex, is interstitial fluid between the cells and the tissues. Some other, some important types of body fluids, your plasma, um, that is the fluid that's in your blood vessels. Lymph is in your lymphatic system, in your lymph nodes. Cerebrospinal fluid is in your, around, nourishes your brain and your spinal cord. Synovial fluid you're going to find in um, joints and aqueous humor is a specialized fluid in the eye that gives the eye its shape. Um, it's, your homeostasis is constantly being challenged. Usually your body does a really good job of maintaining it. Um, intense heat can challenge it. Lack of oxygen, obviously. A drop in blood glucose level. I know myself when I don't eat regularly, I can get a little hypoglycemic where I get kind of dizzy um, a little bit if I don't have glucose. Um, physiological stress, stress from school can cause a lot of people's, um, their bodies to actually go out of whack and so they can't even function. Um, if it's mild, your body quickly restores it. Sometimes intense fatigue, for example, severe infection, poisoning can um, take a long time to heal and possibly not do it. It can cause you to die. So we're going to talk about negative feedback systems. And I know Sometimes this gets a little bit confusing, so let me try to do a good job here. So your body is going to have to monitor itself and um, adjust as needed to maintain that steady state. So you have these controlled conditions that your body has to control. Your internal temperature needs to be maintained 98.6. Your blood glucose level needs to be between 70 and 110, for example. Um, and these are the three basic components of what's called a negative feedback system or homeostatic mechanism. The receptors, the control center, and the effector. They do the work here. So this is a diagram that's also in your book. So in the orange here, some stimulus re, um, disturbs homeostasis. So for example, it's extremely hot outside. It's 100 degrees and the humidity is 80%. You're um, controlled condition that your body has to control is temperature. So when it's too hot outside, humid, you're going to get too hot. Okay. So what's going to happen is as a result of that stimulus, receptors that are in your skin are going to detect that you're too hot. They are going to give input messages, nerves, chemical signals to the control center. The control center is usually the brain, okay? It's going to receive that input and decide what to do, okay? It's going to process it and going to send out an output. And the output is nerve single signals again or chemical signals, hormones, okay? And in this example, the, the output is going to go to the effectors like your sweat glands. They're going to activate to open up to release that sweat so you can cool off. All right, uh, you might even get red in color because your blood vessels are dilating, which means getting larger to let um, water out. No, not water, heat out, okay? Because your blood holds heat, so you, you might get uh, red in color. Like if you're exercising, I know I get pink in the face, okay? So as a result, the receptors, the control center, and the infectors then bring about a change, meaning they lower your body temperature in this case. There's a return to homeostasis, so they lower the body temperature. So this is all about the receptor, 
Again, it picks it up, monitors change, and sends it, gives input to the control center. And there's skin receptors. The control center, brain, decides what to do. We sends an output to the effectors. Um, the effector produces a response that bring it back to that steady state. Nearly every organ or tissue in your body can be an effector. Like for if you're cold, the opposite of that, oh no, like we get cold in Minnesota. So it's away from that um, set point of 98.6, you get too cold. Your skin's gonna send that message to the brain that you're too cold. The control center is gonna send out an output to the effectors. Um, your sweat glands when you're cold are gonna close. Instead of dilating, your blood vessels are gonna constrict. They are going to get smaller. That's why my hands turn blue or get white almost sometimes because it's cold. It's keeping the blood towards the internal organs. Um, your muscles in your, in your skin also start to contract to generate heat. That's why you get goosebumps, okay? It's all to bring it back to that 98.6. Negative feedback. So if this is what your temperature should be, 98 point oops, six degrees okay negative feedback so your body is taking it away from the control center let's say you're getting too hot boom 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 hot 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 now see how far you are away from that set point and it's called negative feedback because here we are it'll swing it around and go back negatively towards that set point opposite direction, okay? Um, an example of a negative feedback system, body temperature, um, you can see blood pressure here, um, blood glucose. Most of the homeostatic feedback mechanisms in your body are negative feedback. They turn it around to get back to that set point. There are a few examples of positive feedback systems in the body. Instead of turning around and going negative, they're going to keep going positive here. So, boom, boom, boom. Keep going this way. Well, why would that happen, Mrs. Callhammer? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that, but here's an example. Normal childbirth. Your body, it's not normal for your uterus to contract with such anger and velocity and is that the right word? Force, there we go, to get that thing out, okay? And it will keep doing it and will get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until that baby comes out and then it's done. Yay! That's a positive feedback. We'll go over this in class. Um, blood pressure, we can go over that in class as well. Childbirth, we'll go over that as well. Um, you can diagnose disease by checking a few things, okay? So if somebody's homeostasis is out of whack for whatever reason, you're going to look at their signs and symptoms, what you can see, what you can test, their medical history. You're going to collect information. A, a lot of doctors, they like to hear the whole story. So when did you start getting these symptoms? Tell them, and they write them down. Um, what else was happening? What medications were you taking? Present illnesses, past medical problems. Sometimes they even ask about family history, okay? They're trying to piece together a story. And then physical examination, like we talked about palpitation, feeling. Sometimes, um, sometimes I might order blood. Look at your blood. Um, pulse, blood pressure, okay? Those things can actually tell a physician a lot about your health right away which is good for them to know. And that is part two.